closet's full. So we went in the closet and started pull, we pulled everything out of the closet and started getting rid of stuff and rearranging. So um, thinking about that process, and it occurred to me that there's no different process with us. It says that we have to, that it, it says in the scripture that we add to our faith. See, God gives us a measure of faith, but then there's a part that we do. And God doesn't add to our faith. When I was uh, growing up, I, for some whatever reason, because of um, at different places what I was taught, we I had a tendency to think that um, when I received Jesus as Lord and Savior, He comes into the, it was the picture was given to me as a, as me being a house, and He comes in and He cleans everything out. But then what? And, and that he's there. Well, th then that that, ha that emptiness has to be filled with something. And if I'm not, if I do that, then that that clean that cleanliness is, is if I'm not careful, is not filled right, because I haven't. I'm not grown. I, at that time, I wasn't grown to where I am now. So as. Uh, just thinking this through as I'm sitting there thinking about it, it doesn't, I don't have to go and clean everything out all at one time. If I do, there's, there's opportunity for that to be filled more than what it was with clutter of things that I don't need. An example, um, when I, I'm sure everybody in here has moved at some point or another. When we move, when I, when when Kelly and I over the past five years have moved twice, and when we go to move, there are things, and, and I picture it as when I receive as receiving Jesus as as Lord and Savior. There are things that we we realize that at the time of moving I don't need and I throw it out. But then there are things that we don't know if we need this or not and we dump it in a box and we pack it on the truck and the things that we know for sure that we don't need we throw out but the things we're not sure of we just pack in a box and we move it. Well, and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that, that there's anything wrong with that. That's just how we do. And then we move, and then we get everything out, and then we clean the the place out and get it ready for the 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 next person, the next owner of the house, or the next renter, whatever the the case may be. And we move, and we bring all of that stuff, whatever stuff we decided that we we may or may not need. Some stuff we know we need. Some stuff we don't know whether we need it or not, and we bring it with us. And then we go to pull, we go two years down the road or five years down the road, maybe sometimes ten or fifteen years down the road, and we go in the closet and we find a box that's been sitting there for all of that time that, of stuff that we don't even know what's in it. And we're well, do I need this? Well, I hadn't needed it for two years or five years or fifteen years. Do I really need it now? And we may. It may be something that, see, because I, I believe that we, as we clean out, and listen to me, I'm not telling you to go home and clean out your closets. And I'm not telling you to go home and take all of it out at one time. What I'm saying is, is that there might be stuff, if, as we've been, let me say it too, as we have been over the past, however long we've been here, and we've been getting things that have been taught, if we haven't been cleaning out our closet that's sitting in our room. And at some point we have to start cleaning out things that we don't need so we can make room for the things that we know we do need. Take it, go back to it cleaning Emma's room. See there, she, she is very creative. Very creative. And she has a sewing machine that her mama has brought to, given her to bring to the house and she has other arts and crafts stuff that have been laying in the middle of her in the middle of her room 
because there's no place to put it in her closet because there was stuff in the closet that belonged to Kelly and I or Joseph or even her that she don't even touch anymore and so the process of going through her closet and cleaning out her closet made room for things that she does need things that she didn't need anymore didn't want anymore she we went through the process of cleaning that out we're not done but it's a start and in that process in that cleaning that out we found that the shelf in her closet is broken so there's a repair that needs to be done and she wants the her room to be painted but in painting the room we need to the closet we need to paint the closet too and and fix the shelf and so all, all of this is a process that you we that we go through to to do to make the thing look to make her room look the way that she wants it to look but what in, in the same process is with us in in cleaning out things that we need to clean out in our lives but what we want to do is we want to go slap the paint on first we do it with you know we can't have the termites eating away in the in the interior walls and not treat the termites and just go paint the wall we we hear uh, being talked by Bob Mumford about um, about agape and about uh, and, and about these things and we, we can't um, well I lost what I but we can't put what, how Apostle Bush has put the cart before the horse you have to fix you, ha you have to clean out to make room for what is needed and when I said that sometimes there may have been something in there for uh, 10 or 15 years and you don't know if you need it or not because when we replace it with things that God has God has given us it doesn't necessarily mean that I need that today but I may need it 10 years from now and if I don't have room in my closet it's and there's nothing wrong with closets we have closets for storage and we store things of God but if I'm if I'm removing things that are not that I know are of not of God and I'm not filling it with things that are of God somewhere there it is going to be filled with something yeah. we are going to be filled with something and so we have to be careful not to remove something without knowing what I'm going to put back in its place and then if as I'm learning this and as I'm taking stuff I have to allow God to to tell me not not go run I don't I don't have to go run today and start searching for something that I need to clean out and that's what I was saying don't I'm not telling you to go home and clean your closets out today you allow God to tell you what's going to be cleaned out when it was talked this morning about uh, doing what God has before what God is saying before you eating the the manna from heaven and drinking from the the water from the rock and I, I may not feel like I'm healed today but I keep on doing that well then as I'm doing that as I'm doing what God says to do the the areas that he's touching in my closets that I need to clean out we that's where we come to the under that's when we get the the we may get our healing just out of doing t taking care of what God gives me to take care of we don't under we don't know when God is telling me to take care of this area in my life the effect that that has on the other areas of my life and sometimes God's having us clean out some of the insides and sometimes it's outside over the past few months I have alternated back and forth and I, I was sitting there thinking about it and uh, you know we, we when, when we bought the house our house we we have idea we still have ideas of stuff that we some things that need to be done and some things that we want to do but we take care of the things that are needed over the things that we want and we want our place to we all want our place we all want this place to look beautiful but let me tell you something 
Sometimes in, take, in, in getting the things that are not of God out of our lives, it's not going to look pretty. And that's where the patience comes in. Being patient with myself, knowing that, that God is working in me and that as God works in me, sometimes the, the ugliness, if you want to call it that, comes out and it doesn't look pretty. And understanding that as God is working in others, the same thing happens. We seem to forget that. I seem to forget that. That in, in the lives of other people, that as God is working, that in, in their, they're allowing God. See, and, and it, it's a participation with God. See, there, that was another thing that I always, you know, okay, well, God's going to come in and do. Jesus is going to come in my life, and he's going to clean everything out, and then he's going to add what he wants in there. Well, it doesn't work that way. See, because he says, you add to your life to your faith. See, we all have the faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb and He was resurrected and He sits at the right hand of the Father. If we have that faith, we have the measure of faith that God has given all of us. He says if you have a, the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain, be removed from here to there, and, and it'll be done. So we all have that faith. If we believe in Christ, whom, we, whom none of us have never physically laid our eyes on, then we have faith. And so we build on that faith. And so having patience with each other, loving each other, as we all walk through whatever it is we're walking through, knowing that because we, we really we all here know each other well enough to know that we're all seeking to to walk with God the way that He has that He wants us to walk with Him, and so we can have patience with each other, knowing that God is working in us. And the, first, and the the other point, the next point is, don't worry about how long it's going to take, because Apostle Tisdale says it all the time. It's a process that's going to take the rest of your life. Like I said, Enoch walked with God for three hundred years, and yes, I know that in that time they lived longer than people live today. That doesn't negate the point that he for, it, that he walked with God for three hundred years. Abraham walked with God from the time he was 75 till he died. And he was 175, 109, I don't remember exactly, but it was, it was about 100, at least 100 years. Noah built an ark for, for 100 years. So we know that he was walking with God for at least from the time he was 500 till he died. And, and had to have been before because God wouldn't have had him build the ark. So what I'm saying is, is for us not to be so focused on how long does it take because we get in a hurry that we've got to clean everything out. I'm not saying not allowing God or participating with God in cleaning the stuff out of our lives, but not to be in a hurry because things aren't happening as quickly as we want them to happen. I still get aggravated at the way people drive. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you how, about me. I, I'm not afraid to. I, I get aggravated with the way people drive. And sometimes you want to, know, to be on, especially when it comes to how fast they drive, it's because that I want to drive that fast. It really, that's, I, I want to drive that fast. There's two things, well, at work, the thing that keeps me from driving that fast is because i got a GPS on my truck. And in, uh, in my car, on most occasions, I have my two children in there. And uh, that's, and, and then, and, and, and sad to say, and then I think about is God really want me to drive like that? 
But I'm getting to the place where I think about how does God want me to react? Or how does God want me to do? I'm just telling you about me. You have your own things. My biggest, my biggest problem is driving. I'm just serious. That's, that's what it is. But we, and, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with God working in me in that. And you have to be okay with God working in you in whatever area He's working in you in. And we have to be okay with the, the, the time frame, knowing that He's not in a hurry. But my big, however, my biggest point that I want, to, I want us to stay focused on is not cleaning something out that God isn't telling you to clean out at this point. Allow Him to, to tell you what needs to be cleaned out and then work with Him on, on that area. Because if you don't and you don't fill it with the right thing, it's going to be filled with the wrong thing. And we don't want to go back. We don't want to have more, more clutter than what we started with. And that's what will happen. Well, everybody that has been in a place for a number of years know that when you go to move, you have more stuff than you, than you, that you've accumulated. I didn't know th how much stuff could fit in a, a 12 by 70 trailer. <laughs> more stuff can fit in there with five people than you, than you can imagine. So, constant and, and knowing, and, and this just, I just had this thought, knowing what God has given you that is, is for you to sow into somebody else's life and not hoarding it. It was talked about in Sunday school this morning, not holding on to something because you don't know, they were talking about the casting the bread out in the ways, bringing the bread back to the, we hold on to the bread because we don't, we're not sure that the next way that comes back in is going to have bread or not because we hadn't been casting out. If we'd cast the bread out, we know it's going to return back. But we're hoarding on. So asking God, what's the deal? okay, God, why do I have this? Why did you give this to me? Am I supposed to hold on? Do I need this for the next five or ten years? Am I supposed to give it? somewhere and then when I need it that will return back I mean it's questions like that that we can't be afraid to ask God and find out why is this it, why is God giving me this what is this in my life for knowing what's the difference between treasure and trash yeah. Amen. and getting rid of the trash and whether I'm supposed to hold on to the treasure or whether I'm supposed to sow that treasure and, and, and we can know that because he, because he says in John that, he, that if, if we receive him, to, those, to as many of those that receive him, to him gave he the power to become sons. This is a becoming process. This is what I'm talking about, about being sons. That's the, that's the becoming process. And we have the power to become. He's done all that he's going to do. And now it's our, that's what I'm, that's what the scripture is saying. There's things that we're, that it's our part that we have to do. He's not going to just do it for us. We have our part. He's done his part. When, Christ, when he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished, and he gave up the ghost. That's the, and, and, as, men, and as we receive him, then we have the power to do what he said we can do. He says, without me you can do nothing. But Paul said, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So with Christ, when I receive him, then that enables me, empowers me to do what I'm talking about. To have, I have faith, already have faith in him, so now I have the power to add to my faith virtue. I have the power to add to my virtue knowledge. He has empowered me to do those things. We've, I, I, I don't know about you, but I have sat back so many times waiting on God to do the cleansing, which He already has done. I just have to walk into what He's already done. 
It goes for healing. It goes for our finances. It goes for every area of our life. He has already done it. We just have to do our part walking into it. But the church has sat back, has taught so much that we're that okay, we'll come to Jesus and everything's going to be all right, and He's going to clean us out, and He's going to fit. Well, He doesn't do that. He's empowered me to do that, and He's empowered you to do that. And so that's what I've been meditating on and, and, and learning how to walk out and, and we, we, I start out I don't say not necessarily but I'm, as I do the things in my natural house I'm realizing that, that I do the same thing in this house and again I'm not telling everybody to go home and clean their closets out I'm not telling everybody to, that, that it's just making room for, for what is, what's, what's already been added.